Good morning, Year 9, and welcome to Week 2 of the Mumbai Presentations. This week, the key questions are, how has Mumbai grown over time? How has Mumbai's population grown? What is life like for people in Dharavi? As for last week, you will have a choice of four tasks to complete, and this PowerPoint will go through all four aspects of the tasks in basic detail. It will be then for you to go away, do a bit more research and present your written work. As like last week, please could you send your work to your class teacher. Thank you. As a starter, think about the following question and then pause the presentation. So Mumbai changed its name from Bombay in 1995. This was its original name. But why did it do this? Well, the name change from, Mum from Bombay to Mumbai um, is because of its history. Mumbai used to be a British colony ruled by the British as part of the empire and the name Bombay was seen as a legacy of this. Not surprisingly, quite a lot of Mumbaikers did not like the idea of having a name that reflected this time in history. And you can see from the painting that not all of the um, Indians would have benefited from having British rule. In fact, Britain used Mumbai and other places to um, trade and um, take the, the resources that they needed to build up the British Empire. So what they did was changed it to a more Indian name, one that they believe reflected the city's heritage and the name plays tribute to the goddess Mumbai Devi. So we're going to have a little look at the history, just a brief look, and what I would like you to do as one of the tasks is to create a timeline looking at the history. The history is incredibly key to understanding why Mumbai is like it is now. So Mumbai was established as a port over 500 years ago in 1534 and the first people to colonise Mumbai were the Portuguese. Then, as we've already mentioned, it was colonised by the British in 1661. Originally, Mumbai was a series of islands. You can see in the map on the left, these islands that were connected by different um, bridges but as Mumbai grew, people needed to use more of the, um, the area, they wanted more land, and so they drained um, the islands or drained the areas around the islands and established bridges to link them. And now, as you can see in the map on the right, uh, there is just one um, land area. So what you can see here is a rather strange looking graph, but essentially it's a line graph. And what we can see about the population growth is that in 1971, the overall population of Mumbai was just under 8 million. In 2011, that had climbed to over 20 million. The graph also shows slum dwellers that live in Mumbai, and we can see that those have also increased reasonably significantly. They now represent about 42% of the population of Mumbai. Just a word of caution, remember that the population um, statistics that you look at may vary between source because of the way that they collect data. For example, it may be that they are only recording data for the city itself, or they might be including all of the suburbs and the areas, the satellite areas beyond city. So here we can see the growth of Mumbai in relation to some other world cities. We can see that in Mumbai in 1960 the population was about 3 million and by 2020 the population was just under 20 million. So that has grown very significantly by over six. The dark brown colour shows the projections of what they think the city might be in 2030. 
and we can see that it's expected to climb to about 25 million. Now, if we compare this to New York, in 1960, their population was much bigger. It was about 13 million. And by 2020, it had climbed to about 18 million. So not a massive increase compared to how it started in 1960. And this is what we would expect. The cities in the developed world, such as New York and Tokyo, um, have not grown as significantly as they have in other cities in emerging economies, such as India or Mexico. So we've got the Delhi and Mumbai, which you can clearly see grow very, very quickly. And as I say, New York, which has grown more slowly. So how has Mumbai's population grown? The third task looks at two main processes that cause cities to grow. These are rural to urban migration and natural increase. As you can see, rural to urban migration is the movement of people from the countryside to the city. A natural increase is where births in a place will exceed deaths and the population naturally grows. Because cities are quite young places, they tend to have quite a large number of births and these are uh, attributed to both of the factors that are mentioned. If you are doing task three, these pages from the textbook will help you greatly. They are to look at what the effects of these two processes are. And the box on the left with the bar graph is very, very useful in helping you to do that. So lastly, this week um, is looking at what life is like for people who live in Darabi. And this leads us into next week's topics, which is all about how quality of life varies in Mumbai. Um, Kevin MacLeod, who pre uh, presents the programme Grand Designs and many others on television, went to um, Darabi slum, which is uh, the largest slum in Mumbai, and he spent some time there getting to know the people and he recorded two programmes. Uh, the first one is shown in a link at the bottom and there's a second one as well um, as a challenge if you uh, fancy watching that. Um, they're both excellent in giving us a very, very good sense of place of Darabi slum and also giving us an idea of some of the problems that people encounter living there and also some of the advantages or positives of life there. Um, so I would very heartily recommend that you watch this it's about 48 minutes long. So this week's tasks are to create a timeline about the growth in history, to find a graph showing the population, which, and you can use the, uh, the graph that I have uh, put onto this PowerPoint, which is um, from the Cool Geography website, which is just underneath, um, is to look at migration and natural increase, and to define the terms and look at how they've contributed to Mumbai. And the last task is to look at slumming it and to make some notes about positives and negatives. Remember, the textbook has been emailed to you, but I have also given you the textbook pages on the next slide so that you can use those if you find them useful. And here they are. Good luck with all of that and I will be um, giving you another PowerPoint for next week. Thank you very much.